The Case of the Evil Wind by Zechariah Sitchin. I just want to point out, folks, that the man's name, the well-known man's name is Zechariah, not Zachariah. It's Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A. -A. It's one of my pet peeves. Everyone all the time goes, yeah, Zechariah Sitchin said it's Zechariah Sitchin. Whew, I feel better now. At the end of the 3rd millennium B.C., the great Sumerian civilization came to an abrupt end. Its sudden demise was bewailed in numerous lamentation texts that have been discovered by archaeologists. The text described calamity as an evil wind that came blowing from the west from the direction of the Mediterranean Sea, a deathly cloud that caused excruciating death to all living things, people and animals alike, that withered plants and poisoned the waters. In the Wars of the Gods and Men, Zechariah Sitchin saw an explanation of the sudden death in a long text known to the scholars as the Era Epos. That is spelled E-R-R-A-E-P-O-S, if you want to look it up. That described a chain of events that ultimately led to the use of weapons of terror in a conflict between opposing clans of the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came, or weapons of mass destruction, we might say. Based on the descriptions of the weapons in the Era Ippos and in the Lamentation texts, those are called the Lamentations of Sumer, I believe, Zechariah Sitchin concluded that the weapons of terror were nuclear weapons used to, obliter used to obliterate the spaceport that then existed in the Sinai Peninsula and some sinning cities such as Sodom and Gomorrah the nuclear cloud was then carried by the prevailing winds eastward, causing death and desolation in the lands between the rivers, Mesopotamia, the empire of Sumer and Akkad. Besides claiming that nuclear weapons were first used on Earth, not in the 1940s in Hiroshima, but thousands of years earlier in the Near East, Zechariah also pinpointed the date, 2024 B.C., Scientific corroboration now comes along. That the civilization that sprang out in Sumer, circa 3800 BC, reaching unparalleled heights under the last dynasty, the third dynasty of Ur, U-R, Abraham City, had to come to an abrupt end near the end of the third millennium BC, it has been an accepted and well-documented fact. That the end was abrupt, was also certain. What scholars deemed as still lacking was an explanation, how and what caused it. Beginning in 1999, archaeologists and scholars specializing in the Near East saw mounting evidence that the demise of Sumer and Akkad, Sumer's northern extension, coincided with an abrupt climate change. An initial study by Harvey Weiss and Timothy C. Weiskel of Harvard University was reinforced by subsequent study in geology in April 2000 by H. M. Cullen et al. from the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University and the University of Utah and the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and the Institute for Geowissenschaften, Germany. Based on studies of unexplained aridity and windblown dust storms and radiocarbon datings, they reported that their readings indicated a date of 4,025 years ago, plus or minus a margin of 125 years. A precise date has been corroborated. Those and similar climate change studies relating the climate conditions to the rise and fall of civilizations in the old as well as the new worlds were summed up in a major study published in the prestigious Journal of Science in its 27th of April 2001 issue, authored by Peter B. de Menocal of the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University. The study paid particular attention to sedimentary remains of tephra, T-E-P-H-R-A. The telltale rock fragments confirmed the date 4,025 years before the present and 4,025 years before the present year, A.D. 2001, is exactly 2024 B.C., as Zechariah Sitchin had determined in his book in 1985. 
<coughs> These burnt through pieces of black and gravel like rock mostly fall near their volcanic source. But ash like particles can be carried by prevailing winds over many miles and can stay aloft for more than a year. The area in the Sinai Peninsula where the destroyed spaceport had been is indeed covered to this day with grave like burnt through blackened stones. For photo evidence, see illustrations. 105, 106, 107, in the Wars of the Gods and Men, book by Zechariah Sitchin. But as Zechariah has pointed out in his book, there are no volcanoes in the Sinai Peninsula. In the Sinai Peninsula, the source of the wind-carried dust remains a mystery. And the only explanation for these broken and blackened stones in the Sinai and the wind-blown desolation in Mesopotamia can be the tale of the Era Epos, reflected in the biblical tale of the upheaval of Sodom and Gomorrah. Not an eruption by a non-existent volcano, but the use of nuclear weapons in 2024 BC. That's it, folks. Also, you might want to look up, I have a video I published this week called uh, Nuclear War of Anu and Enki in Sumer Iraq, Mesopotamia, which covers this topic in more detail. Thank you for coming to the Plain Mundane Show. Please hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I'm Alex Aquarius.